We've cued the music, and you know what that means. It's time for the Louis Heron Weekend Kickoff with Louis Heron. At the end of the day, what's most important is to find the car you want that meets the expectations that you need for you and your family. And Randy Beasley. Of course, uh, the weekend, you got folks uh, maybe thinking uh, it's going to be some uh, nice weather to get outside and uh, peruse the uh, car lot. And now, here they are, Louie and Randy. It is Friday. Yes, it is. And uh, Louis, so quick. That's right. Louis is in studio with us today. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. How do you feel? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. You ready for some football? Oh, man. How can you not be? How uh, can you not be? This is a great, right, be- before, great time of year. Before we get into the pros, uh, did you see any of Georgia last week? Oof. I'll tell you what. That that uh, If Georgia's game plan is to keep those rotation of three or four even five, if you want to even throw Douglas in the mix, because he 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 can pound it out too. These teams are going to have trouble in the fourth quarter, man. Because Gurley, he he looked. Uh, if you can keep that guy with you know seventeen attempts, keep him fresh. He's a beast. It's going to be an interesting year. It sure is. Uh, there was uh, the the first NFL game last night. Uh, Percy what'd Harvin think, looked great. What did you think about that? I, uh, I expected more to the Packers, but uh, I did too. I did too. Uh, I guess man. maybe just you undervalue how good Seattle really is. Like I, I just. I, you know, I, I mean, I guess they are they are a fantastic team, but it just they they um, maybe it's just Pete Carroll, maybe it's just coaching. They know? added a, they added in, injury to insult last night. Uh, Green Bay had a couple of guys get hurt too, so that was a yeah. r- rough night for them. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get the uh, important stuff out of the way. Uh, Falcons and the Saints this Sunday uh, at the uh, Georgia Dome. That's a that's that's a that's a doozy. That, start start the year that, off. That's getting. What do you think going. about that? What do you think about that getting? It's a good, uh, a good test, you know, right out of the gate. A good, uh, well, see where you're at, kind of game. Yeah, there's going to have to be uh, a lot of uh, points scored by the Falcons for them to have a chance. Well, I, I, you know, look, Miami plays New England, so a lot of people, you know, and Saints play uh, Atlanta. To me, you got to play them twice a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, so when's a good time to play the Saints? You know, when's a good time to play the Patriots? I mean, you know, first game. You know, you might as well. Uh, you know, some of the coaches haven't prepared for some of the new stuff you've put in, maybe, and you can. You know, I think your best shot to win in your division, uh, you might as well play. You know, uh, first first game, first two games. I mean, you might as well get it out of the way. Well, the the only real pressure, if if you think the Falcons are going to bounce back this year, the only real pressure is that uh, if you drop this first one at home, you still got to play them again there. So that's that's tough. But uh, yeah, Miami's got the same it, thing. It's an important game for for both teams. All right, okay, there we go. All right, that's uh, we always that's like it. no to, more Dolphin talk. We, we that, like that, was that you just <laughs> you, you skirted that quick. Okay, okay give me the record. What's what's the record going to be this year? Miami's going to be uh, ten and six. Everybody looking closely into your radio, uh, Louie has the full dolphin That's colors right. That's flying right, today. That's right. That's right. I bleed aqua. I can't help it. <laughs> Look, you ten know how it is. It's it, it, terribly ten and six this oh, year. Wow. Be ten. If they're not, if if they don't win ten ball games, they they need to re- replace the whole regime. Okay, you know we're recording this, right? Yes, so, so I know. We'll and, have and this to pull back out That's later. Right. That's right. And 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 those of you that are listening, it is recorded. So when we go over these tips, uh, you can go back and listen to uh, all this information. I, you look, I, I don't know if you realize this or not. You know, Randy, you and I have discussed this off the air. I mean, I, I literally take time to really go through and think to myself, okay, if I'm a consumer, what are some of the things I need to know when I'm buying a car? And look, being a car dealer or being someone who sells cars, I mean, we've discussed this as well. You know, a lot of people listen and go, why would you give all this information? And and, and I can't express enough to any dealer that's listening or any other consumer that's listening. This, this stuff is out there. It's been out there for years. So, you know, in, in my opinion is, you might as well be on the offensive. Share with the with the consumers what's going on, how they can get their best deal, develop that trust you need, so they can. Because I think consumers realize they're going to go to a car lot. Uh, they're not going to they're not going to sell cars and and lose money. They're, they they deserve to make a profit. The, the question is, what's a fair profit? What's a fair interest rate? What's a fair value for my trade? What's a fair value for your price? If you can put those things together. Develop that relationship with consumers. They build that trust and they buy everything from you, you know. And so I think more dealers should be more open minded because the fact of the matter is, you can know it's like all it's like it's like football. If I know you're running through the six hole and I'm playing defense, it really doesn't matter where you're running. If I if I do my job and I take care of my responsibilities, I can stop the play. And and no different on you know when you're buying a car or you're selling a car, if you do what you're supposed to do, do it right. Right, the consumers get a fair deal, and the dealer makes a profit, and that's all we're really trying to do. And and, and what we're going to talk about today is how to get the most for your trade. I've I've got five good tips. When we come back, Randy, you, you're going to like these. All right, and of course I'm going to I'm going to defer to you. 
and you're gonna you're gonna spoil two or three of them real early, like you always do, and that's fine. <laughs> but we want if you're interested to know how do I get the most for my trade? What is my game plan when I go to trade my car? Which, is, by the way, is the most sensitive part of a car deal. The trade-in is the most emotional, sensitive part of the car deal. People are not worried about what they're buying. They know you're going to try to make money. Their trade is such a sensitive matter because they're connected to it, they're attached to it, and they don't want to get robbed blind on their trade. I'm going to show you five ways how you can get the most for your trade. The Louis Heron weekend kickoff. I do want to mention that uh, Baldwin is on the road tonight. Uh, John Miller's GMC Prep are at home tonight. Our game of the week, uh, GMC Prep hosting Glasscock County, and that's a 7.15 airtime tonight right here on Country 102. Also, Georgia Military College has their uh, season home opener tomorrow hosting Kilgore College. That's tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And to get the weekend kickoff going, here's Kenny Chesney, the boys of fall on Country 102. When I feel that chill, smell that fresh cut grass. I'm back in my helmet, cleats, and shoulder pads. Standing in the huddle. Hey, we've got an even better chance for some showers and storms. 73 degrees now at 822. That's our Bobby Brown Insurance <laughs> Agency time. You're listening to the Louis Heron Weekend Kickoff with Louis in studio today. And uh, we're getting questions here. We, 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 we have a question. Okay. This, want, for, this is for one of your associates. You ready for your this? Your valued associates. Are you ready for this? You uh, want to go right. ahead and yeah, jump yeah, into yeah. it? So okay. here's the question. So the question is, if I, if I have a paid-for car and I go into a dealership, should I tell them that I have a car paid for or not when they want to know how much do you owe on your car? Okay. All right. So in other, words, Randy, in other words, should I start giving out all uh, this information up front right. and, uh, is basically what the question sounds like. So, Randy, you're, so so, what's your answer to that? You're, you're the car connoisseur. Okay, my thought had always been, and you, you've, you've talked to me about this, my thought has always been, you know, when you walk in, if the first question I hear is, well, are, are you going to pay cash or yeah. are you going to finance this? Yeah. That always bothered me in the yeah. past. And Why? You've, you've Why told does that me bother that, you? have told me that shouldn't That's bother crazy. me. That's yeah. crazy. Well, you know, it's oh. just no, it's just human nature. It's like, okay, well, he's asking me this because if I'm if I answer one way, he's going to try to uh, give me a higher price okay. than if I answer the other way. All right. So okay. let's okay. So let's say you go to buy a house, and a realtor asks you, uh, oh, well, let me ask you, what's your what's your monthly investment? What are you looking to spend on a home? What's what's your budget? Do you get offended the same way? No. Why? <laughs> That's my point. Now, first right, of all, right. I, I got you. I'm a realist, and, and I understand when people say, hey, I go to dealership, what do you pay, how much you got down, what do you owe in your car? Uh, I, I understand those questions and how they make people feel uncomfortable. All right? I get that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not going to sit here and say, well, it makes no sense to me. It makes a lot of sense to me. But where I have the rub, not even being a dealer, okay, just but, but having the experience of 20-plus of years in the, in the automotive business, I understand deal structure is the most important thing. Here's what we know from surveys. Number one, customers don't want to go back and forth. Number two, customers don't want to be in dealership four or five hours to do a deal, okay? And, and, and with those two factors, we can, we can withhold the information and, and, and dance uh, you know, the whole time if you want. But ultimately, that information's got to come out. We can do it at the end. We can do it at the beginning. We do it at the end. We could be on too much car. We, we don't know the credit situation. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, um, I, I don't necessarily believe in my heart and I, don't, and I don't train salespeople. In fact, I train the opposite. When a consumer comes to the lot, um, I, I, don't, I don't care what, 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 what they pay, what they owe in their car. I don't care about that stuff. What I care about is I want to make sure that I put my best foot forward. I know the customer's there. They're not there for milk. They're not there for bread. They're not there to drop off their kids. They're there to get information to buy an automobile today, next week, next month, wherever. So it, it, being a salesperson, I've got to put my best foot forward to, to be in the running in that situation, knowing that most dealers, and most car salespeople are trained from years ago, and they, and they got it ingrained in their blood. They, it's hard to even get it out of them now, is, is, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Are you ready to buy a car today? How much do you pay a month? How much money you got down? I mean, how much do you own your trade? Who'd you finance it with? I mean, all that interrogation questions can be very offensive to a mm -hmm. consumer, and I mm -hmm. get that. The reality is you got to know that information. So the, so the key is how do we go about getting that? Back to her question. If you've got a paid-off trade, should I tell the dealer that I have a paid-off trade? Because I feel like I'm going to be getting taken advantage of if I, if I tell you it's paid for. So here's the answer to that question. The reality is is whether you, whether you try to say that, that it's not important, don't worry about my trade right now, that's fine. You're going to get the same value. Uh, for your trade one way or another, whether it's paid for or not paid for, and the value is always going to be wholesale. Now, here's the difference. Now, they can give you a trade allowance, a dealership, 
can give you a trade allowance and over allow on your car. Let's say you have a $10,000 vehicle at the auction. The dealer is going to appraise that car for $10,000. If it's really nice, they may give 10 5 10 7 Well, if you hear 10 5 10 7 after you've been on KBB and you've seen 11 5 12 grand, 13000 for extra clean on your trade-in, you're immediately going to hit the roof. You're going to immediately think, wait a minute, hold on. I was just on KBB. I just went to Edmonds. In fact, I went to NADA. In fact, I've got a loan officer. That's a buddy that said my car is worth X. Here's the reality. When we trade these cars, we talked about negative equity last week. We own these cars. When we write a check form, we now own them. And when the book drops and the value drops, now we have negative equity. So a dealer is going to do their best to take a car in on trade on wholesale, whether we get it from an auction, a fleet company, a lease turn-in, or a trade-in, or the service department. That's that's our job to get the car, buy the car right, just like you want to buy the home right, right? We're going to retail that car as our plans. The key for the consumer is if you're going to get wholesale for yours, okay, then you want to buy a car not at full retail, not at full MSRP, which is why people say, look, I don't pay attention to sticker. Let's let's go start from invoice and 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 so and, and I'm not saying that's not fair as long as the dealership's making a profit, as long as you're getting a good deal. So back to her question, sales managers, they're human beings like everybody else. If they feel like um, you withheld something. Okay, and and they want to. And your car's worth twelve thousand dollars, and you waited to the very end. They they may start off at ten thousand dollars. Okay, because maybe you came in on a price that was on the internet price that was uh, five hundred below invoice with the rebate. Well, there's no money to be made there, or very little. So they don't want to put too much money in your trade because now they've given you a great deal on the car, and now they've gone backwards on the trade. Does that make sense? Right. It's just uh, it's like a, a wheel. It's another spoke. It's just another. Uh, part of the equation, and and uh, whether it's all up front or whether it's uh, kind of trying to grab right. for information, you're eventually going to have to get to that eventually, point. Eventually, yeah. but the thing that I would say is it's it's interesting whether you're getting a loan for a mortgage, or you're going to a credit union to get a loan for a car, or whether you're going to buy a home. All three of those phases, as an example, will ask you, "What do you make? Where do you work? How long have you been there?" How much? How much? Uh, do you have any overtime? Is there any excess income? Can anybody else sign with you? These are all the same questions a car dealer is going to ask. But when you're sitting in front of a loan officer or you're sitting with a real estate agent, not not one time do you get offended. In fact, you share that information gladly. Look, here's what I got. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm working with. I, I want to pay eighteen hundred dollars for a, a, a house note a month. Period. Uh, what kind of house do I need to be looking at? And the realtor may say, well, listen, we need to be finding a $200,000 house or less or $175,000 house is what we need to be looking at. And, and, and that information is received, right? You're going to try to buy the most house for the money. But the reality is when you go to a car lot, you just feel differently based on your past experience. So can I answer her question a different way? Go ahead. Okay, my answer would be, uh, do you trust the car dealer you're dealing with? Do, do you feel pretty good about this car dealer do you think this car dealer is going to treat you fairly if you do then exactly tell them <clears throat> well is that, is that okay that is okay the problem with that answer though randy is that most consumers don't trust any car dealers it doesn't matter if it's me it doesn't matter if, if it, it i don't name names because i don't want to i don't want to come across wrong but it doesn't matter they they, they don't in, innately because of their past experience i don't care if they lived in florida and moved to milledgeville i don't care if they were in atlanta and moved here they, they've had experience with dealers and, and, and they know how the game goes, so to speak, and they're very apprehensive, scared, and uncomfortable. And you know what? They should be. They should be because until car dealers start turning the corner with customer service, customer care, which the manufacturers are, are forcing it. It doesn't matter if you want to be that way as a car dealer or not. The manufacturer is forcing that customer treatment to raise a level, the integrity, the way of doing business, which is why the Internet is so prevalent. We didn't get to our first point, but I promise when we come back, we will get to tip number one on how to get the most for your trade. You don't want to miss it because there's some real key nuggets here that you can get really get the most for your trade. It's the Louis Heron weekend kickoff. We remind you Louis Lake Lot is located up to Lake Oconee near the Pyramid, and uh, you can uh, check out the website. Yep, at louislakelot.com, and, and I'm there, so we, we, we can work a deal together. Um, and so you definitely uh, get, get your mobile device and look at louislakelot.com, check out our inventory, over 60 cars, and uh, if you need to chat with me, we'll do it. Have a All cup right. of coffee. We'll be back with more with Louie in a moment. 74 degrees at 830 at Country 102. Here's Blake Shelton. Country 102 with uh, Blake Shelton's Neon Light, 74 degrees at 834. It is uh, Friday. It's a uh, Louis Heron weekend kickoff with Louis in studio today. And You had a great you, – well, some of the stuff you say off air, yeah, I'm like, wow, you need to say <laughs> that on the air. Record, that was good. Need to record that. Yeah. 
give you give your point what you were just what you were just saying. Well, it's it's just sort of human nature that every everybody thinks uh, in most every transaction that if um, if I if I walk in and today I offer cash for an item, I've got a chance to get a better deal. And my example was a couple of years ago. There was a, a certain item I was looking for. This tell was, the item. This, Go this, ahead. Just, okay. Just this tell was, the this item. was out of town. I was traveling. And uh, I saw a uh, a store was having a, a sale, and they had a poster, and that poster was a um, rendition of the uh, original ticket when Georgia played Yale uh, many, many, many years ago. Right. And I and you weren't in the market to buy anything. I, was, I you... wasn't. I wasn't looking for it, but I saw it, and I immediately was in lust for this product. Okay, I wanted right. it. I wanted right. it. And I wanted it now. And I knew they were having a big sale, and I didn't, you know, it didn't say they were like closing the store or whatever. But I knew they were having a big sale, so I just said to the uh, said to the person there, I said, "Hey, is is that the best price you can do on that?" And the first answer was yes. And then I walk around for a minute, and then I say, "Are you sure that's the best?" And she said, "Well, I think I can get it to you for this." And so I said, "Okay, I'll give you this amount out the door, no extra for sales tax, nothing, you know, out the door cash right now." And she spoke to her manager, and I bought it for that price. Right. So I think a lot of people think that it works that way for everything, every time. In other words, if it's a car, if I walk in and say, hey, uh, cash today, then I should get the very best deal possible ever. And that's not always the case when buying a car. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, in fact, even when, you know, like we've discussed in the past, and I don't think people realize this, but every time we finance through a, through one of our lenders, especially when you're with a manufacturer franchise, you, you have opportunity to get rebates and incentives just like you do on a car. So when someone says, I want to pay cash for it, I got cash money right now, as a dealer, it's like ding, ding, ding. That That's worse for us because now you may have just taken – $250 flat, if we just send a deal to one of our lenders, let's say it's SunTrust, we send a deal to, to SunTrust, we get a $250 flat, that's $250 more that we could get, or $250 more off the price that you're trying to get to. We realize we've got that money made already, and we're three or four or $500 away from a deal. Well, I know I've got $250 made uh, from the finance company. I could give that up and make the deal with a customer, right? We, there, there's a way to make a deal that you're not aware of because you want to pay cash. And then if you send 15 or 20 deals, you may get, you know, three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars a contract you know back on everyone you've done for the month so if you said 20 deals that could be eight thousand dollars sitting on the table that we could get from from taking care of our, our our lenders so again to your point it's not always what it's perceived and that's what we're trying to get to and, and we're talking specifically today about getting the most for your trade so so the first thing uh you know i, I want to go over is i just want to talk about the research needed for you to avoid wasting your time i think when people are trading in their car, there's there's a couple things you got to understand. The first thing is understand supply and demand in the marketplace for the vehicle you're trading. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna go through these real quick because it's all under the same point. Understand fuel economy, gas prices right now. Understand seasonal vehicles if you have one, and understand the market. Okay, so what does that mean? Understanding the market means right now is 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 new car sales up? Is it down? Is used car sales up or is it down? It's gonna affect your trade in. Okay, uh, understand if you have a seasonal product. Let's say it's December and you've got a beautiful convertible. Randy, do you think that car is going to bring more money in December? No. No. But you know what? You're in love with that car. You know it's a nice car. It's a beautiful car. It's been garage kept. It's it is KBB doesn't understand seasons. It just says it's worth X. And you're driving to Key West next week, and uh, that Carlito doesn't know that, and neither does the <laughs> Kelly exactly. Blue Book. Right? So so the point is is but but you gotta understand seasons. I mean if you're if you're driving. How about you know gas prices all of a sudden go through the roof because you got something goofy going on with Iran and Iraq and who knows what and and and, and and barrels of gas are up, and you have to be driving an F-350. Well, guess what? That right now may not be the time. Or at least understand that KBB says X, NADA says X, but but they don't keep up with what the gas is going up, it's going down. I mean, so you you got to understand, um, again, the, the, the fuel economy, understand the supply and demand. If you have a Toyota Camry, the number one selling car in America, there's a gazillion of Toyota Camrys out there. You know what? There is a high resale value with Toyota product, but at the same time, you've got to realize you've got one of millions of those cars on the marketplace. The supply is extremely high. We can buy these cars at the auction, $500 less than what KBB says all day long. You've got to understand that you've, you've got a vehicle that's a high, high supply vehicle. You know, if you've got a very niche, you've got a Mini Cooper, and there's not many in the marketplace, and you've searched on Auto Trader, and you know there's not many out there, you should get a little more for that Mini Cooper. 
You know, I mean, these are the things as my first tip that I would tell you is do some research before you trade so you can have an understanding of what's going on. And that first tip will help you out dramatically. The second tip, you, you, when I go over it, when we come back from the break, you're going to think it sounds um, easy enough, but there's serious value to it, so you don't want to miss the second tip. Louis Heron, weekend kickoff on Country 102, WKZR, 8, 840 now, 20 before 9. Here's Craig Camp across from Walmart. This is Country 102, Louie here in weekend kickoff with Louie in studio today. 76 degrees now at 845. Fattening me up with all these donuts, uh, man. Well, I well Dunkin' Donuts, you know, though. It's like, a, it's like I'm like an addict. I mean, uh, you can't even, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I think there is something addictive in there, yeah, yes. Good. Uh, and yeah. they appreciate the free ad you just gave them, yes. Well, you know, I'm good <laughs> like that. Hey, I, I, I like the Dunkin' now. <laughs> Keeps you running. All right, uh, we we are we're having uh, some good conversation here today about uh, a little bit of everything and about uh, when to buy, what to buy, and how to how well, to do that little pre pre research. Well, there. your trade in is, is is key. Again, it's one of the most one of the most emotional parts of a car transaction. So here's number two, tip number two: back up with support with service records. Okay, now here here's what I mean. You know, uh, the, especially with Highland, anyone who's driving a Lexus, BMW, um, Mercedes. Uh, you want to talk about getting more for your car? If you've got a nice car, I mean a nice, clean car, and you've got records to support that this car has been serviced. I mean, when you look at, especially like Highlines, when you look at BMW, the major service that are done, or, 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 or Mercedes, these things aren't cheap. I mean, so when a dealer appraises a car, and we see that it's got 56,000 miles, and, and the 60,000 mile service has not been done, we already know that's 1,400 bucks. Mm. And that's at, at, at dealer cost. We already know it's gonna, so if you've got a $30,000 car, I mean, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at a 28.6 car. Well, to a consumer, you're like, wait a minute, KBB is saying it's, so, so again, what, here's what I'm saying. Do, do, can you get more for the car? If the car's been serviced, I think you can, okay? Um, it, you need to show that and let the, let, the, let the dealer know that you've done the service. I think it's a huge piece, is, especially with Highline cars. Even if you've got a, one of those reliable cars that everybody knows runs for, forever, like those imports, like those Hondas, those Nissans, those Toyotas, those, those cars that, that everyone that we know, the, the, the theory and, the, and, and, and what's been said about those cars for years by, by consumer reports, they run forever. Well, they only run forever if you change the oil, do the service, 30, 60, 90. 120. If you've got a 120,000 mile, you know, Honda Civic and you've kept the service records up, that's a gem. That's a nice car. You can get the money for that car. You can, it will bring more money for the car. Okay. Let's talk about another thing real quick before we go to break is, is the obvious essentials. Uh, when you, when you go to trade your car in, I, I'm not going to tell everybody that you should spend a whole bunch of money. Because I will tell you, the dealer can do whatever you can do a lot cheaper, okay? So there's no sense in you paying retail for something to get it fixed. But I will tell you, if you're selling your car to someone in Auto Trader, Randy, think about this. If you're going to sell your car, you want to sell your car because you want something new. You put it in cars.com or you put it in Auto Trader. How are you going to present that car to that customer? Well, you're going to have to, uh, I guess, spend the time to uh, meet them or... or uh, Yeah, know. but just think about the car for a second. Would you, would you have the car... Ratty looking or not? Not at, a, oh, not of course at its not. finest. No, I mean, you, no, I mean, you if you're it. trying to sell the car, right? Sure. So if you're if you're going to a dealership, okay, I'm not telling you to do a full fledged detail, but what I will tell you is, man, you know, vacuum the, you know, spruce <laughs> it up a little bit, all right. And 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 when you have a chance, you put on your selling shoes and 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 to want to talk to the used car manager and and sell your car. Talk about it. I will tell you the biggie for 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 trading in vehicles: tires, AC, and a bad Carfax. Okay, if if your AC is hot it's blowing hot okay or your car has got less than 330 seconds on it with tires it may and sometimes that's deceiving it looks like there's some tread there but but again if it's less you know it's 430 seconds 330 seconds um or, or you have a bad carfax or you had a any carfax issue okay that is going to scare a dealer okay and that is going to immediately do devalue your trade at a rapid rate so again you know be aware of those things so your expectations are realistic i'm not saying that you know if the ac is not working that well just just have an expectation that it's you know it's going to cost a dealer 15 to 2000 dollars fix an ac 1800 bucks you know give or take um just know that going in you know if it needs tires you know that may be another thousand bucks 800 dollars in tires so so if you are researching on kbb or some of the sources that are available 
Keep in mind, Kelly Blue Book has never bought a car from a consumer, not one time. Edmunds.com has never stroked a check for a car. Those are guides. And and the people that are going to buy the car is going to be the dealership or whoever you sell the car to. They're the ones that's going to physically make the decision and write the check for the car. And those are the ones you have to appease. Those uh, those other sources are guides to keep you going. But realize the obvious essentials. If you've got a, a bat, if you've got a car fax, if you've got an AC that's not that's not you know blowing real real cool, and tires are not good. Those are three big dings on, on a trade in. Louis Heron weekend kickoff. Uh, Louis Lake Lock. You can see Louis there today. Absolutely. And, uh, come, you, you coming by today or no? just uh, you come by today? Give me the directions. You? Just head toward the lake. Head toward Lake Oconee. Well, look, we we got the the, the landmark uh, of the pyramid right right there on Lake Oconee Parkway. The address is nine eighty Lake Oconee Parkway. It's right in the major intersection between the McDonald's Chrome Marina, uh, you know, in the pyramid right there. You can't miss it. And uh, we've got about sixty cars out there on the lot. And um, it's uh, again every every make and model you can think of. Great quality cars, all serviced, all car, all, all car faxed, ready to go. All right, we'll be back one more time with Louie in just a moment. Louie's weekend kickoff. Louie Heron with us in studio. This is Country 102, 850. Here is the new one from Garth Brooks, People Loving People. Country 102 with Garth Brooks latest. It's 853, 75 degrees. And uh, we'll be back with uh, Louie in just a moment here on Country 102. Don't forget, high school, high school football tonight, the game of the week, at GMC Prep hosting Glasscock County, 7.15 airtime tonight here on Country 102. This Friday, the Fall Line Farmer's Market returns to the front lawn of First Presbyterian Church at the corner of Wayne and Green Streets in downtown Milledgeville from 5 to 8 p.m. You'll find seasonal produce, yummy baked goods, arts and crafts, as well as live music from Freelance Ruckus. Kids will again be thrilled to meet the barnyard baby animals from Oasis Family Farm. So bring the family and your friends. They accept EBT at the Fall Line Farmer's Market. For more information, call 478-414-6433 for the Fall Line Farmer's Market downtown. It ain't just the weather that's got you hot and fired up. It's football fever time. Hey, it's Spikes for JMG. That's Johnny McDay Grocery, an old-fashioned full-service meat market with fresh produce since 1963. 452-7259. We're on the Vincent Highway. Come on by for ground beef and ground chuck. We cut and grind. Hey, we've got steaks and we cut and trim. Also, chickens, wings, leg quarters, drumsticks, small, young, and tender. And we've got mountain tomatoes and cabbage. Johnny McDay Grocery on the Vincent Highway. We're with Daryl Black of Flooring America on Highway 22 West across from Williams Park. Well, fall is almost here, Daryl. Right, Scott, and we're going to let some prices fall to celebrate the fall. So that we won't be the fall of Flooring America. It'll be the fall for the falling prices. If it was $30 a yard now, it's going to fall to $25. $25 is going to fall down to $22, $22, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Got some great buys on some flooring. Uh, now's the best time to and beat the pre-holiday fix-up rush. Come now, now to Flooring America at 50 Highway 22. Got great specials on vinyl, carpet, anything you walk on. We got to hear your best price for uh, home flooring anywhere in the Middle Georgia area. How's the inventory? Full, bulging. We need to we need to get it down to normal levels. That's why we got the big sale going on right now. Hurry on down. The Super September Sale at Flooring America of Milledgeville. You step it up, we step it down. Falling prices at Flooring America of Milledgeville. Highway 22 West, across from Williams Park. This is Country 102. Back one more time with uh, Louie Heron. The Louie Heron weekend kickoff on Country 102. And uh, we've had a, had a good time talking yeah. this morning about some different, uh, different ideas. Trades, trades, trades. How to get the most for your trade. You know, definitely... You know, just just really um, think about those service records. Make sure you have those obvious essentials. You know, um, you know, tires, little basic cleanup, air AC. Make sure it's working okay. Do the research, knowing that you got uh, you know what the seasonal uh, seasonal what time of the year it is based on what you're trading. Gas gas prices, if fuels up, and you got a truck, etc. You can go back and listen to all these online. Be a Facebook fan of Louis Lake Lot. Just get your phone and just uh, be a fan. We'd love for you to join us. And we, we got all these recorded, about 25 minutes worth when we put them all together. So it makes up a nice little uh, show. So, mm-hmm. and, you know, listen, before we go, I just want to let you know, again, Louis Lake Lot, um, right on the edge of Putnam and Green County, uh, 980 Lake Oconee Parkway. I want you to know, really, the, the, the main thing is is um, check out my prices on the Internet. Uh, you can go to... Um, 
autotradercars.com and find my cars. You can go to louislakelot.com. The reason why I bring that up, Randy, is I, I know price is a sensitive matter, but I can tell you um, my, my the price points that I have based on the overhead that I have, which is me and two other guys. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you need to at least shop us before you buy a pre-owned car because not only will you get a great quality car, um, obviously I'll stand behind it. You, you, I mean, you know how to find me. I mean, I'm there every single day, um, and I've been in the community for you know since 2009. So I'll take care of you. But the but but the the prices I promise you are second to none. We're going to pop up number one, two, or three on almost every car that we have in stock in every brand that we carry, which I think is tremendous. We have um, about 60 cars in inventory and 15 or 20 constantly coming in and coming out, coming in and coming out. So you have access to a lot of great vehicles, all brands, all makes, all models. Um, and again, um, we have all the lenders you need to get financing, and we do have cars that start at you know three, four thousand dollars. We got a couple of those. We don't, we don't, you know, place our stake in the ground on that, on that type of merchandise. But we know there's a need for that. Some people just need a, you know some some inexpensive transportation. We've got them, um, but we pride ourselves in, in that fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, and ten model stuff. I mean, stuff still under factory warranty. You know, two thousand nine with forty thousand miles. You know, nice imports. We carry everything you want. So come check us out. Go to louislakelot.com. Or you can dial us at 706-991-1900. So uh, it's the news, weather, and sports, my friend. And remember, if it's not there, Louis, oh, we'll find Louis it. will find it Yeah, for that's you. true. And, 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 and you bring that up. Uh, you know, sadly, as, as a dealer, you like to sell what you have in stock. But invariably, um, we may have the car someone's looking, but it's one year older than they thought. Well, that's not a big deal. We don't require a deposit. We just need your email. We'll start the search. We'll send you pictures, miles, prices, interest rates, payments before we make the buy. If you like it, we'll buy it. We'll bring it in, and it'll be subject to a ride and drive. If for some reason it don't meet your expectations, uh, there's there's no requirement for you to purchase. LouisLakeLot.com, Lake Oconee Park, right near the Pyramid. That's it. And, Louis, go see him today. Thank you, sir. Have a All good right, weekend. Buddy, thank you. All right, this is Country 102, WKZR Milledgeville, 76 degrees at 859. I've got $100 smoking in.